Hi, this is a post-conference recording. Hi, this is a post-conference re-recording of our presentation entitled "Constructing an Anonymous Dataset from the Personal Digital Photo Libraries of Mac App Store Users." This is work done by our PhD student Jesse Gozali, narrated by myself, Minyan Khan, with collaboration with Hari Sundaram at Arizona State University. What we're going to talk about today is the problem of being able to do research on personal digital photographs. And the main problem with this line of research is that it is personal. Research on personal digital photographs needs access to real data. This means that stock photograph libraries that have been extensively studied, such as the Corel Digital Libraries, are not suitable. Nowadays, we have camera phones that take many pictures, and events can have many thousands of pictures associated with even just one event. However, the personal nature of these photograph collections is usually quite sensitive, and volunteers are not interested in putting their data online, even accessible for just researchers. Past research on personal photo collections have used photos from the researchers themselves or have solicited volunteers for money, but this doesn't scale very well. So we ask ourselves this question, how can we reach out to a large number of potential volunteers? One answer that the community has come up with is to use crowdsourcing. Crowdsourcing is soliciting volunteers on an internet scale using such platforms like Amazon Mechanical Turk. These are useful platforms for generating human judgments as long as precautions are taken, for example qualification tasks or verification questions, because many of the workers in these platforms are there in it for the money and do not necessarily do a good job of the task at hand. But there's a big problem with this type of crowdsourcing platform. Annotations on the data must be done by the phono owners themselves, not third-party evaluators. This is because personal photographs are inherently personal, and there is a semantic gap between the photos and what they represent to the individual taking the photograph, as well as to the people who are viewing the photograph, who may not be related to the people who take the photograph. We have come up with another solution and an alternative to use app stores or application stores. These are widely used distribution channels for software for mobile applications, such as Android's Marketplace, Apple's App Store, but also for desktop applications. These are stores with a very large user base with high download rates. And this helps application developers manage the purchase, distribution, updating, and publicity of their applications. In order to do this, we had to create an app that would help us construct a suitable data set for researchers to use in replicating research on photo digital organization. We did a study to use Mac app stores to alleviate the cost issues of reaching many potential participants for constructing a data set. We published a photo application called Chapters that was presented last year in JCDL 2012. We used this Chapters software to, and published it on the Mac App Store and invited users to participate in the study as an opt-in. You can see the dialog box that was presented to users of Chapters if they wanted to share their data with us. We had to make this an opt-in study because of the necessary privacy issues. Our Institutional Review Board, or IRB, approved our study with this in mind. Here's a quick look at the Chapters photo browser that we released on the Mac App Store. It allows a user to segment an event into multiple chapters. A chapter consists of photographs that are somewhat similar in certain picture-taking styles. 
either in terms of its aperture length, time gap, or color. This allows us to organize very large sets of files that might have some duplicates and might not be well segmented just by time gap alone, which is typical of many other software such as iPhoto, Aperture, as well as Picasa. There are some downsides into using the Mac App Store or other application stores to disseminate and collect data. This is because the applications that are constructed need to have a useful purpose. Otherwise, people won't understand or use your data collection software. So in fact, our photo browser is actually functional and is intended for end-user use. However, it does collect the necessary data for our purpose of collecting a large-scale data set for personal digital photo organization. The applications for Mac App Store need to undergo revision and take usually one to two weeks. There are some positive points in using the Mac App Store. One is that the cost doesn't scale with the number of participants or the amount of data collected. For us, the only cost that was ensued was the $99 US fee per year to distribute the app via the Mac App Store. We actually collected over 20,000 photos sets, which consisted of over 400,000 photos at the time of publication. And this makes the cost per photograph extremely small, much less than one cent per photo. For the 60 photo sets that people actually annotated with chapter boundaries, we captured these annotations as well. The cost was about one cent per annotation. The visibility of the, these apps are very high because when they appear in the Mac App Store, many people will take note and may download the software. The total number of downloads in the two months of the study was over 2,500, or 42 per day. Now let's examine some artifacts and analysis of the chapter's dataset. Our dataset is completely anonymized. We actually do not have the photos themselves. We have generated photo features corresponding to things that are used in our event photo stream segmentation algorithm. This includes time gap, aperture diameter, log light or scene brightness, and an 8-bin color histogram. These data set can be expanded to be including other types of anonymous photo features in the future. And our data set is publicly available for further research in personal digital photo libraries at the URL below. For the sake of shortening this URL, you can see this URL, which we'll refer to on the subsequent slides. If we analyze the color distribution of the slides, we can see that clusters 1, 4, 5, and 6 show different types of ratios of black and white, while the ratio of the remaining 6 colors is pretty constant. However, Cluster 2 represents just the color distribution mostly for blue and cyan colored photographs, maybe photographs of sky or sea. Cluster 3, on the other hand, shows a representative color distribution for red and yellow photographs. We also analyze the time gap distribution captured in our library. We define a photo taking burst as a sequence of one or more photos taken in succession with the same average time gap. When we detect a burst, we went over several different resolutions of time gap, including one second to over several hours. You can see from this chart that the highest number of photographs taken with a specific time burst is on the left side of this chart, 9 seconds on average between several photographs, or about 2 or 3 photographs, was the most common. We saw the largest average number of photographs per burst is 4 photos with an average time gap of about 1.1 second. 
This would correspond to pictures that are taken in rapid succession. Whereas the first one might correspond to photos where people are posing and needing to take one additional time. When we look at log likelihood, sorry, log brightness of the photograph, we can see that the distribution fits a two-mixture Gaussian distribution better than a single distribution. While we don't have access to the absolute timestamps of these photos, because we only have the time gaps between subsequent photos, we believe that these peaks may correspond to the day and the night time. There are other statistics that we can examine, but for the sake of time, we will conclude here. This is our first study on chapter-based photo organization, which has been embodied into a actual software implementation available to end users on the Mac App Store. It's an unsupervised method for event photo stream segmentation, which has been embedded into our freely available chapters-based browser and has generated a publicly available data set for photo organization research. And in this paper, we have specifically outlined how data collection can be done using a channel such as the Mac App Store or Application Store as a distribution platform for collecting data while releasing a meaningful app to the public.